Alright, welcome back to another episode of Riding the Wall Podcast. I'm Chad. And I'm still Justin. And we've got a lot to talk about this week. Um, how was your week? Did you have a busy week? Yeah, I did. Yeah? Yeah, it's been real busy. Chasing turkeys and yeah. working. And did you get any turkeys? Trying to keep the old lady happy. And That's a job right there. That's a usually. full time. Yeah. No, uh, I didn't get a turkey yet. No. Wasn't ready for my season to be over. Well, yeah. so. there's always tomorrow, right? <laughs> or another day, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, after Monday, I'll have a lot of free time. Yeah. Well, that's good. You deserve it. Um, so, last week, we were, of course, looking ahead to Talladega, and we had things to do. We were out the door pretty quick because we were going to Brownstown to watch uh, Larson run the late models. And uh, we forgot to talk about favorite memories of Talladega. You know, we've been doing that with favorite uh, memories of each track. And we forgot to talk about favorite memories of Talladega. So we're going to start right there before we get into anything else. Oh, man. It's like I every, have a few. It's like every year is a favorite memory for me. Yeah. Uh, I honestly just love that day so much. Um, but the, the Brad Keselowski and Carl Edwards feud at Talladega, that, mm-hmm. that's probably my favorite. When just going off Carl Tom sent head. Brad upside down. Yeah. And I'm a fan of both of them guys. Yeah. You know, you know that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it was it was racing in its purest form. High speed and a very little bit of contact can cause a lot of damage. Yep. And, uh, you know, those are two superstar race car drivers in my book. And it was... Uh, we caught Ollie and Frazier that night in yep. Talladega. You know, <laughs> it, it was awesome. It was a good race. It was a good, I mean, it was, at the time it wasn't entertaining, but, you know, because you had to worry about Brad and how he was doing. But looking back on it with the feud that those two had was pretty yeah. good. And seeing, da- you know, Davey, Allison getting the first win uh, back in the early 90s, late 80s. I can't remember the exact year when, when he won at Talladega, being the the young buck of the tele, of the Alabama gang. Yeah. You know that was a pretty awesome race. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I think he actually beat beat his dad in that race. His I dad got second. Yeah. You know? And uh, it was uh, it's pretty awesome to see to see that. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. I remember watching that race not too long ago. It was I think it's on like an ESPN Classic or something like that. They replayed that race and and uh, and, and showed that. So yeah, he did. He did beat the old man on that race. Yeah, and the old man didn't let him. <clears throat> no, you know, no, he, he didn't, didn't let him win. I don't blame him. <laughs> I wouldn't let him win either. <laughs> right. I mean, that's just something you don't do. And, he, and you know, before the at the pre-race, they had a little segment there with Dale Jr. talking to his four drivers at junior motorsports in the Xfinity series or truck series. Um, and they did this little show there in this bar and he was talking about his dad Mm -hmm. and he was talking about when his dad was going to the races with his grandpa, Ralph Earnhardt, who started the family legacy, you know? And, uh, he said, dad just wanted to race really a, a whole lot, you know? And uh, a lot of you listeners may have seen the pre-race and know what I'm talking about, but um, he said, Dad just wanted a race. And he said, when his dad was 12, he stole one of the race cars and went out on the track with it. (laughs) And Ralph was pissed, obviously, you know, but he went out there and he actually done good against these other drivers. So after, after that whole thing unfolded, Ralph decided to let him get into this other race and Ralph was going to be in the race as well. Mm -hmm. And it was some, some kind of race, small town, probably weeknight race, but they had V eight cars and a few, they didn't have enough V eight cars to run this race. So they let a few of the V six drivers race with them. So Ralph put Dale in his V six and let him get out there on the track with him and all these other experienced drivers. So, 
Junior was telling this story, and he said, you know, Dad's is out there racing. You know, he's a young man at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, Ralph comes up behind Dale Sr. and just plows him right in the ass. <laughs> and, and he said, Dad was, like, scared. You know, Dad was like, holy, you know, what what's going on? So he said he... You know, he he just kept driving, kept driving. Ralph come up again and just plowed him in the ass again. He was like, what is going on, you know? And so he got, he went down the track, get on the inside so his dad could go around him. Well, his dad followed him down there. Next thing you know, freaking <laughs> hammered him in the ass again. And so, so that's when Dale Jr. said, that's when dad hammered it. Dad just got on it and said, well, all right, I'm going, mm -hmm. you know? And he's in a V6 and Ralph's in the V8 and... He said, uh, you know, they raced, but Dell Sr. was the only V6 car that beat some of the V8s out there because of how hard he was driving. He said after the race was over, they pulled the pits, and and he went up to his dad, and he's like, what what the hell was that? And he said, son, that's your first lesson in racing. Mm -hmm. He said, you don't let anybody pass you. You were trying to let me around you, and I followed you down, and that's why I hit you again. You don't even let family pass you. Yep. And I thought that was an awesome story. Oh, yeah. and That's a hell of a way to learn, too, right? right? But that's exactly... <laughs> and, but go, going back to that Talladega race where uh, Davey beat Bobby, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, in my heart, I feel like, I guarantee you, Bobby didn't let him win. Yeah. So... Yeah, I agree with that. Well, my, my biggest memory of Talladega <clears throat> is probably... Earnhardt's last win in uh, Talladega, the fall of 2000, and I remember watching the race. He was back in, I want to say 20th, 21st spot, way back there with, with like 10, 12 laps to go. You know, pretty much count them out if they're back that far, right? And uh, you know, the race is going on. I don't even remember who was winning the race. I don't remember a whole lot. Of other details but I remember watching and I was noticing that Dale just he'd go over to this and it was it was train racing yep. still back in that day <clears throat> too wide so he would he would get a few spots and then he would jump over to the next lane he'd get a few spots he'd jump back over to the next lane he was just quietly moving up and after a couple laps he'd moved up four five six spots and next thing you know, he's he's in the top ten. And then that's when the announcer started noticing that he's he's up there. And uh, he just powered his way to the front and ended up winning that race. And uh, I thought that was just probably one of the most impressive things that I've ever seen at either Talladega or Daytona. Yeah. But uh, It's calculated, you know. Yeah. But it's calculated chaos, too, because you can calculate like that all day long, but when it, when it all falls apart mm -hmm. and it takes luck right it, it does. takes some luck but it also takes like you said it's calculated it's skill yeah it's you're playing chess with the house burning around you you know it's you have to remain calm you have to know what everybody else is doing and be able to um, calculate for that maneuver around it and it, it was just it was just pretty impressive um and then one of mine was also the uh, the Brad and the, the Carl incidents. Yeah. So um, that was pretty cool too. I don't I don't know if uh, you seen there the beginning of the race this past Sunday where they had uh, the Allisons given the start your engines command. Yeah, I that seen was, that. I that, that was pretty awesome. That was pretty cool. Had Bobby Davy or not Davy? I'm sorry, Bobby. Davey. Donnie. Donnie and Red Farmer yep. was out there giving And the they said Red Farmer raced in the Friday night Sprint Cup dirt race across the road at Talladega. And finished second. Yeah, ahead of Kyle, <laughs> him and Kyle Larson. He raced Kyle Larson. <laughs> and, I mean, come on, give it a standing <laughs> ovation for that man. You I know mean, what that, I'm saying? That's you, a stud right there. I mean, you, you can't, but that's just, you know, we say all the time that these these NASCAR drivers, these athletes that... It's in them, you know. It's it's a passion. It's not a job or a career. It's just mm -hmm. it's just what they were put here on earth to do. Mm -hmm. And what says it more than that, you know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean how on. how old is Red Farmer? 
I don't know, but he looked pretty old. <laughs> right. But And to finish second? Yeah, to get out there and race with them young boys. and Number and, one, he's not afraid to take a hit at that you age. You can't be. Well, you can't be, but at that age, you you, you kind of think about that stuff a little bit more than yeah. you do when you're 25. But so He wasn't him, afraid to, to roll it. No. You know what I'm saying? No. Obviously wasn't afraid I to mean, put the pedal down. It's going to hurt a lot more to roll <laughs> that car at 75 than yeah. it is at 25. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But... Uh, big pat on the back to that, that, that legend. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. Cause I, I thought that when they, when they said that, I was like, did I hear that right? I, I was watching it on replay, so I had to rewind it. But yeah. Yeah. I heard that right. He, he raced it I mean, last night. I mean, he literally spanked a bunch of them young men. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. That's crazy. But no, um, it was a good race. I enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, that, it, was, it was a pretty good race. I mean, but just, you know, like I said last week, I don't, I mean, the big one is always exciting. That's not why I watch it. I, I love to watch the long runs of train racing at that track, you know, mm -hmm. the three wide, you know, 15 deep. Um, there was a lot of that. I mean, the big one didn't happen until right before yeah. the, the checkered flag flew, you know, so I, I was pretty happy with that race. Yeah, Kyle Busch wins the race, uh, makes win number two for him. He joins Larson and Byron Yep, as the only multi-winners this I'm, year. I'm glad to see Richard Childress back in winter circle that much. You yeah. know what I mean? I oh, mean, yeah. you could usually, I mean, sometimes you could get Austin Dillon up there in the victory lane and stuff like that, you know, and... You know, but the most you can count on that was once a year. You yeah. know, and not even every year. And I think Austin Dillon's won what four races total in yeah. his career so far. So for Bush to already have two. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'm glad to see. You know, Richard, back up there yeah. two and, times in a season. I'd love to see him up there more. It. I mean, yeah. he's he's been through a lot in his days in racing. You know, um, he's got he's had some ups and downs and a lot of both. So he deserves it. I like to see that. I'm you know, it takes some, him. takes some uh, weight off his shoulders. You know, mm -hmm. lets him probably lets him enjoy racing like he used to. Yeah, you know, not stress about it as right. much. I'm sure there's still stresses, but nowhere near what they were. Right. I mean, when he had Earnhardt, you know, I mean, he was in victory lane every other week. Yeah, you know, and I'm sure money was a lot more free flowing and. <clears throat> Came a lot faster. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to see Kyle doing good, and I'm glad to see Richard Childress racing team <clears throat> doing good. So Yeah. So let's talk about that race. Um, we had a couple good incidents there. Well, not good incidents, but um, big incidents. There at the end, we had the, the big one with Larson, and Priest was the... the main thing that everybody was talking about with that wreck um I, let's talk about that for just a minute i watched it probably six or seven times because for multiple reasons number one seeing the passenger door bars of a race car get folded up it like larson's have. did yeah. is just <clears throat> number one it's scary even if you're not in the car. Um, it takes one hell of a hit for that to happen. Um, number two, I'm surprised nothing nothing came in and got to Larson. Um, the other thing was the, the camera that was aimed at Ryan Priest when he hit. Um, now, I know I listened to the announcers and you know like everybody else did and they're saying that he was gassing on the throttle to get past larson i don't believe that to be no. the case no. i don't think he ever saw larson he never saw him until he hit him or a split second but he he might have had enough time to say oh shit yeah he did he, he damn sure didn't know it was larson <clears throat> he might have seen a car for a, a fraction of a second right. but he i guarantee you he couldn't have said oh shit there's kyle you yeah. know yeah, because there was no brake whatsoever. Right. There was no brake, and you can tell by looking at him, you know, he had the seat, and he had his helmet in the way. So he couldn't see that far to the left. Well, and here, even more touching on that point, Priest's spotter didn't even have time 
to say up or down. You know what I'm saying? He didn't even have a fraction of a second to say, it, you know, because when you're out there and something like that's going on, you got smoke, you got dust, you got all that stuff around you. Mm-hmm. But you've also got that guy in your ear telling you how to get around these wrecks when you can't see. Right. So for the simple fact his spotter didn't even have a word to say to get him out of the way tells you that Ryan Priest didn't. Right. He had no way of knowing that Larson was even there. And I haven't heard the radio chatter between those two. I I haven't heard what the spotter has said to Ryan during that time. But, um, I mean, I can see him saying, hey, you've got one spinning in the grass. You've got, you know, somebody passing you on the inside or outside. But he never, you know, Larson's in the grass, so he's out of the work. He shot up that track really quick. Yeah, he did. But that's what they're taught to do, stay in the gas, stay in the gas. You know, you have to. Especially on a track like Daytona or Talladega, you go high and you gun it. Get through it. You know, I mean, if you get hit when you're doing that, the odds are very low of that happening. Well, and I'm and you're exactly right, but also those guys that are spinning like Kyle was are taught to stay in the gas. You know, they are taught just keep that pedal down. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, because if you stop, somebody's gonna slam you. Right, exactly. Keep that pedal down and just ride it out. You mm-hmm. know. And and I don't know how fast Larson was going as he was going up the track. He he was down in the grass for a little bit, so he lost a ton of speed. So he wasn't heading to the wall at 180 miles an hour or anything like that. But Priest was probably doing 170. Oh, he's you know, because I mean, he had just shifted. He was still in the throttle. He was getting through it, and then bam, you know, next thing you know, he's collected up in this accident. He don't know. It was really freaky watching him as he was getting hit. Um, did you see hit. the in-car camera of Ron Priest? Oh yeah, when, yeah, when he hit that, when he hit Larson. the camera going out the windshield, or it, the camera that was facing the him. The camera that was facing him. Oh yeah, yeah, that was freaky. I mean that that was that scary. jarred the hell out of him. I mean his face mask blew up. You know? He moved more than he was supposed to in that car. Yeah, you know every every safety thing that we have or that NASCAR has instilled in these cars to keep these drivers safe. They're all still in place, but he still moved a ton. You know, yeah. that Hans device kept his neck from going anywhere, obviously, so it did its job. The seatbelts did their job also, but he still moved a lot. Right. And um, I don't think there's no way around that. No, there's not. There, there's, there, there ain't. There's only so much you can do. I mean, these drivers, you they, can't, they you, know when they get in that you car. You can't pour them in concrete. You know? Right. And I, to me, if that was me in one of those cars... I mean, I know it's all about safety and it's everything to keep these drivers safe, but sometimes I think that they're in there too tight. And not really for Daytona or Talladega, but for me, I would almost get claustrophobic if I was if I was in there. I know that's the way they have I to be. I don't like, yeah. I know that's the way they have to be for safety reasons and, and to keep these guys safe and, and, and stuff like that, but it's just like... Wow. That, when you can't when you can't even turn your head side to side. Yeah. You know? I mean, all you can do is look out that windshield. Yeah. You know, that, that that would bother me. I mean, I guess I would I would get used to it like these guys have, but um it it would bother me. But I think um for a wreck to jar the visor up on that now who's to say it was down completely? I don't I don't know. It might have had just a little crack in it just to get some that air. That was a in hard there, hit though. Yeah, that was a, I mean, it could have been locked down and, and just as easily slung up as hard as he hit. Yeah. I don't know. And it was just <clears throat> and for Larson, I mean, we we've we seen what Priest went through. Just imagine what Larson went through. I mean, he's going up the track towards the one wall. direction and then all of a sudden, bam, somebody hits you at hundred and seventy in a passenger door. That change of direction alone, I don't see how he didn't get hurt. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he felt it the next day. I'm sure him and Priest both were pretty sore the next day. Oh, yeah. But, it had to be. Had you know, be. I, I, you know, it, it was a, God, I mean, it was a nasty hit. But if either one of those guys would have had any control over it, it wouldn't have happened. Period. Yeah. They, they don't do that to each other. No, the, the, no. The worst two enemies out there on that track. I would say Denny Hamlin and Ross Chastain probably wouldn't do that to each other intentionally. No, it's, you know it's, it goes against everything that a driver's right. you know it believes in and is is raised 
but to do in the sport. The scary thing is, is I feel like if that would have happened in the driver's door, we'd be having a lot different conversation. Oh yeah. I mean, I 100 percent agree, and that's the scary part for these bars coming apart the way they did. I mean, just to come apart is a massive, massive hit for them to fold up like they did says a whole nother it's it just takes it to a whole nother level you know i mean you just don't see a roll cage do that it's the whole purpose of a roll cage you know i mean you're in there like a caged rat basically and that cage is going to protect you and save you when that thing comes apart it really makes you think about everything you know well when you look at austin Dillon's bag wreck and i'm sure it's probably one of the most YouTubed, Googled <laughs> yeah. searches in NASCAR out there because that wreck was... Was that the, at the 500 or was that at the summer that Daytona? Was, that was at, I believe it was the summer Daytona. It was a night race. Okay, um, yeah, you're right. You're right. And, um, you know, that was a incredible crash. And, I mean, the car was in two pieces. At, from the firewall forward came apart from the mm-hmm. car. The yep. engine was laying in the grass by itself. On fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and his roll cage was still intact. If mm-hmm. that tells you how bad that and Kyle that, Larson hit was. Yeah. Yeah. And if you haven't seen it, the Austin Dillon wreck that he's talking about, he got flipped up over. They were running three wide by the start finish line, and he was on the. Austin Dillon was on the inside. He got flipped up, rolled over top of two lines of traffic. And the catch fence caught him. And he went from 200 miles an hour to zero in the snap of a finger. In about 60 feet. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, he went the catch fence did its job. Yeah. It, it exploded. His car exploded. But he got up and walked out. Yeah. And that's yeah. a testament to what these cars can handle. He got hit when he came down and landed. Yeah. You know? Who was it? The Keselowski. Two car. Keselowski at the time hit yeah. him after. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't Brad. I mean, Brad wasn't trying to. No, he was out of but, control, too. But, you know, he, he went went airborne, just like you said, went over two lanes of traffic. Upside down. Right. Hit the fence multiple times all mm-hmm. the way down that stretch. Got thrown back into traffic on his roof. Hit again when he landed. Mm-hmm. And his roll cage was still intact. Yes. That's I mean, impressive. Yeah. That's incredible. But, but you know, that I mean, that just, that one little single hit. It, well, I can't say one little single it was a single hit, but it wasn't little. That yeah. when Priest and Larson got together this past weekend, it was that tells you how much force and how much speed was there. Yeah, and I know NASCAR took Larson's car back. I think they took both cars back to the R and D center to look at it to see how this happened. Um, and I think that raises a few more questions. Are are the chassis of these cars? coming from NASCAR are they from the uh, you know the one supplier the vendor that they're getting everything else from you know because if I'm a driver I want to know who welded these things together I want to see their work right. and that's and that's even at this and they probably do they they probably do but even at like when I was racing here at the at Brownstown you know I, I knew who put my welt who mm-hmm. welded my roll cage together because and that was the first thing I inspected on that car before I went out on the track because I'm putting my life into the skill of someone else's welding, you know? Yeah. Um, so I want to make sure that it's it meets my standards before I climb in that car. So um, that just kind of raises questions for me. You know, who's who's is this a NASCAR just giving these cars out or is it... Uh, you know, are, are the teams actually able to weld these cars up together? And I, I think it's coming from NASCAR, but I don't know that. So I could be wrong there, and I'm, I'm going to wait and see what, what comes out of that to, yeah. before I make any judgment calls on that. But, um, but yeah, that was it was really nice to see them guys get out of their car and wave at the crowd. Yes. And, and you, you know, I mean, God, God bless. I mean, I'm, thank God they're okay. That's you know? scary. Oh yeah, it's scary. And and I'm sitting in my living room, and it's scary as hell. You know, I can only imagine. But um, and that wasn't the only bad wreck we had. We had 
the wreck for the for the end of the race. You know, we take the white flag. We've got Bubba leading Ryan Blaney, and um, after they take the white flag, Talladega happens. You know, we well, that's we, what happens when Bubba gets up front. We <laughs> Bubba's out front, and um, he's blocking Blaney. Blaney's trying to get around him. He's pushing. He's you know. They both was blocking. They were both doing what they were supposed to do. Yes, and that's I have heard. You know, we're recording this on Thursday, so it's been a few days since this race has happened, and I've I've heard some um, some thoughts and opinions from other people, and some I don't agree with. Um, you know, a lot of people are putting the blame on Bubba. Some people are putting the blame on Blaney. I don't fault either one of those drivers. No. It's Bubba's job to block. It's Blaney's job to get around him. Especially after you take the white flag. Right. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when when you're playing offense and defense at the same time, you got two cars, one playing defense, one playing offense, you're never going to move down the track and up the track at the exact same time. It's, it's impossible. Right. You know, so when you got them two cars, one going, one going up and the other one coming pretty quickly behind him mm-hmm. you know blaney's gonna go up try to get around bubba when bubba when bubba sees blaney going up he's going up so there's a second there where bubba's gotta go behind blaney's move to play right. defense mm-hmm. and when them bumpers front and back bumpers are rubbing together in opposite directions it's gonna happen it don't work out well no no but it's <laughs> but that's racing that's racing. And I would say the same thing if Blaney was playing defense on Bubba. Yeah. You know, I would. Yeah. Um, Wouldn't have been as happy about it, but I just, <laughs> it's the truth, you know. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and and a lot of people, like I said, they, they're blaming Bubba and they're coming down hard on Bubba. And I'm not a Bubba fan. I know you're not a Bubba fan. Um, he was doing his job. But he was doing what he was supposed to be doing in that moment. Yeah. It just, it didn't work out. Um, and it probably wouldn't have worked out no matter who was in front. It, it, exactly. And that's exactly what I was going to say. I had my finger up at Chad and I was, <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say was Talladega never works out for the mm-hmm. leader on the white flag lap. Never, yeah. ever. I mean, Tony Stewart said it years ago in the booth. I think it was his first year in the booth was I will take fourth spot over first on the last lap at Daytona or Talladega. Yep. You know, and I, I agree with that. I'll take four spot every day oh, over yeah. first. I mean, where was Kyle Busch running when this happened? Right. Third or fourth, right? Yep. And he ended up getting a win. <clears throat> and my problem with the Bubba and Blaney wreck is, like I said, it's no fault of either one of theirs because they're both doing what they had to do, what they needed to do, and what they were supposed to do. My problem is <clears throat> we have put... And when I say we, I'm saying NASCAR has put such an emphasis on winning. You win and you're in, right? Um, So now you've got two guys that have to win. You know, Bubba won a race last year, I think it was Kansas. And he's good at these super speedways, right? He's always a threat to win at these super speedways. And so is Blaney. But Blaney didn't win anything last year. I'm sure he's hearing about that every day. Yeah, he got in on points. Yeah. Yeah. So he's wanting to win. He's wanting to shut the critics up. He's wanting to get that win. He's good at the super speedways. But we put such an emphasis on winning that we're seeing things like this. Um, you know, and and it wasn't necessarily in this circumstance, but you see it all the time. You see that guy that gets out there and he's he's leading the race, and he'll go up and he'll block the outside line, then he comes back and he blocks the inside line, and he goes back up and blocks. He'll be blocking three lanes of traffic. That's never going to end well. Um, and I'm afraid that it is going to end up being a very bad story one of these days you know and i think it's going to end up and this may be a bold prediction that i really don't want to make but because the cars are the way they are because these two tracks are the size that they are and the speed you carry with these tracks 
<clears throat> and and winning is everything, right? These drivers have no choice but to block three lanes of traffic. And I do believe, I don't know how long it's going to take, but if it stays going the way they're going, we're going to have another Dale Earnhardt incident. Well, and touching on your and point. And I don't want to say that, but I'm afraid we will. Right, and touching on your point, I agree with most of There's The one thing I disagree with was the win and your end thing causing more of a panic to succeed because I think every one of these guys at that level when they arrive at the Monster Cup Series after going through their childhood racing after going through uh, sprints, late models, modifieds um, <clears throat> truck series xfinity series when they arrive to the monster energy cup i think it's so ingrained on their brain and dna to to do that job like bubba and blaney did i think they i think it would have panned out the same way because it's their that's how a fantastic race car driver is made is they're wired that way they're wired that way yeah. right that's perfect i yeah i didn't know what words to use but that's perfect <laughs> and i think well even if both of them had four wins a piece already i think it would have still panned out the same way because that's what they're but they're, would you have the urgency if Bubba and Blaney both had two wins on the year, let's throw this out there. If they both had two wins on the year, would they be... I know they would both be fighting I think so. hard. I think so. The only way I wouldn't was, let's say I'm a Penske driver. I'm Blaney's teammate. You know, and me and Blaney are doing that. Now, if me and my teammate are doing that, and we're in first and second... We better chill the hell out because now we're costing the boss on each a, other. Yeah, on yeah. each other. Now we're going to cost the boss a lot of money when we could just go ahead and take first and second without. Right. Cause damaging that, at that it. point, it becomes you two versus the field. Right. Yeah. And that, I think that's the only way that I wouldn't be doing the same thing that Bubba did or being doing the same thing Ryan was doing. Yeah. I think that's the only way I would that scenario not to go that way was if it's me and my teammate and we're going to cost the boss a lot of money. I, I can agree with that. Um, I don't like it any time, no matter who it is, I don't like it when I see these drivers blocking three lanes of traffic just because I've been around a while. You know, I've seen some bad things on these NASCAR races. When people do that, like just like Dale Sr. was doing, you know, he was blocking everybody. He was holding off the field. He was going to let his two boys fight for the win. He was going to let Dale Jr. and Michael Waltrip, whoever wins, wins. They're both his cars. Big Papa's going to hold the field off, and it cost him. Um, so, and I just, I don't want to see, I'd hate to see something like that happen again. I would too. Um, I mean, that, that that's the worst day in NASCAR. And I, and I that's know that that's... Racing. Yeah, and I know that that's, that's part of the game. But should it be? No blocking, yeah. The, well, the blocking is. but And I know we've come a long way with safety, especially since Dale. We've got the Hans devices. Because we've got the softer in, a, walls. in all honesty, like I said, you know, me and you have had this conversation many times before. Yeah. I mean, defense is just as much being a good will man as offense is. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, you, it don't. We've said things like, you don't always have to fa have the fastest car to win. You know, and that's true. Yeah. You know, you can't drive a fast car or a slow car fast. We know that. But you don't have to be the fastest out there to win. But if you can block really well and anticipate really well, then you can pull a win out here and there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but... I, I, I do know exactly what you're talking about. When when you're getting on tracks that are 200 miles an hour and you're three wide, now blocking is something different. It's a different style of blocking. It's fast blocking. It is 
you can't anticipate that kind of blocking. Yeah. The speeds and, are too much. And a lot of times you have to depend on the guy in your ear. Right. To make that block. You can't, you know, when you're on these, well, I can't really compare it to the dirt days because in dirt you don't have a rear view mirror, so you can't really block, but I know a lot of these other classes have rear view mirrors, and, you know, it's it's a slower block, and <clears throat> you're making that block. You don't have that guy in the ear. You're seeing what you see in the rear view mirror. You can turn your head. You know, everything is on you. Every All your senses are heightened. You're... you're you can feel the people. You're in that you. zone. Yes, you can hear them. <laughs> you can feel them. They're they're beating on your back bumper. They, uh, you know, but it's all you. You're not depending on someone else to make that block, right? So if so, if you mess up, it's you. If you make it, it's you. Uh, but on these tracks, you don't have that. It's most of the time. I'd say seventy five percent of making that block is by that guy in your ear, and. You know, hey, that, that's where we're at, and I, I get that, and I'm 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 okay with that. But it, it's a lot different. the The transmission time from spotter, you know, Chad, if I'm your spotter, and I say one low, by the time I said that, that guy's already gone. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I mean, if you don't do exactly what that spotter says on a track like Daytona, Talladega, and hell, even Atlanta, now, if you don't, if if you're not making that move when those words are rolling off his tongue, it's too late. Right. Like, if you say one low, in my mind, I think I've got one low coming up on my back bumper. You right. Know, maybe, maybe his front bumper is, is even with my back tire. But by the time I hear it, I comprehend it, and but the, I have pictured it in my brain, our front bumpers are matched. Right. And that's just know? me throwing that out there. I, right. All right. these teams, these spotters and drivers have their own language, and they mm -hmm. know what alphabet means you know what i'm saying they yeah i was just throwing that out right. there for, yeah. for people who so, might not so they know or understand what we're talking about have a maybe, maybe a mental picture yeah of what you're saying but yeah by the time that <clears throat> rolls off his tongue and gets to that driver's ear i mean it it's probably already too late you know yeah because they're not you know when you're on a track the size of talladega 2.66 miles you know you're watching it from afar Mm -hmm. You know, if they're on the back side of that track. I would almost want a spotter on each stretch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> At Talladega, I would. Because if I'm a mile away from you, and you're not sitting in the seat I'm sitting in, I, I'm, I don't give a shit who you are. <laughs> right. I'm probably not even going to trust you. You know what right. I'm saying? It's, it's going to take a lot of faith. It takes a lot of faith, and that's what I was going to say, because that spotter is up on top of the press box. So if you're looking at the back stretch, or you're looking at turn three, or even turn two, you know, that's a good... They're look, The spotters are watching these things from, the, from binoculars. Right. So that driver has to have so much faith in that spotter that... A quarter of an inch. Yeah. That spider has to see that there's a quarter of an inch opening that you can take if you moving. need it. Moving. While it's moving. While it's moving at right. 200 miles an hour. Right. That's just incredible. And you're the guy strapped into that car, and you can't turn your head to the left or the right. You just have to take his word for it. Yeah. Now, I mean, imagine doing that at 40 miles an hour. You know what I'm saying? It'd take, it'd take a lot of balls to trust anybody. Your own mama. You know, I mean, I trust my mom. Cause... Right, I mean, it's like me and you. Like you said just a little while ago, if you're right. my spotter, you know, everything goes through your mind before you get in that car, what we've been through in our life, oh, you know, and, you. and everything. It's like, and you st you tell me, go low, go now. By God, I better either be going. Or not. Or, yeah. You're going to get swallowed up. I'm going to have to explain why I didn't later on. Right. You know? So yeah, we're probably going to destroy the the hauler when we get <laughs> right get out of the car. There's going to be some conversations because I can promise you, you know, if the you know flip that script, if I'm in that car and you're up there saying, Justin, go high, you yeah. know, I'm going to say, Chad, go fuck yourself, you right? Know, because <laughs> I'm what I'm seeing, I don't think I'm going high. <laughs> right, I'm I'm sitting in the seat. You ain't you know? right. <laughs> it's easy to sit up there and watch this crash unfold when I go high, uh -huh. you know, but. But, uh, and back to the Larson thing I just thought of in my head, you know, what would have happened if Larson makes contact with the wall 
head on at the same time Priest is hitting him. A change of direction in Larson's seat. That's just, it just boggles my mind to think about it. Yeah. You know? I mean, it, it, it was nasty. I, <clears throat> but, it was, but you know what? I mean, that's that's the reason there's a prayer before every race. That's, yes. That's the reason they play the national anthem before every race. Yes. I mean, it's those, every, every one of them guys and their families and their teammates go out there week in and week out knowing the risk. And, you know, uh, NASCAR is the only sport, I think, anymore, the only professional sport where they still do a prayer. And, and I hope that never goes away. I, I'm right there with you. And, you know, I'm a big believer in that. And there's there's a reason for it. You know, they've taken the prayer out of schools, and we're seeing the results of that, mm -hmm. you know, in our modern world right now. Yeah. So I hope NASCAR never strays <laughs> away from that. Well, I'm glad you said that because, you know, you hear people, it's like, Psh. You know, it, like when we're at the track, we're like, uh, you know, you see people around that are like, oh, we got to do this. You know, and they take off their hat and they stand up or they don't even want to stand up for whatever reason. It's like, it's not a political thing. No. Nope. You know, it's, it's, it's about these drivers. You know, these guys are putting their life on the line and their for your entertainment. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's one wrong move changes. Not only it could end their life, it could change their family's life forever. Yep. You know, so. So when you're at the track, don't overlook that prayer, you know. Take your hat off and stand your ass Take up. Take your hat off, stand up. Even if you don't like the flag, I know you have that right, but stand up for that prayer, you know, because that's for the drivers. Um, we want them to all be safe. We want them to all make it out of that car in one piece. Those those drivers are just like us, you know. Yeah. They, they've got wives and kids and moms and dads and brothers and sisters Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they, they're, 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 they're just regular people, but yeah. they, they, they have an awesome job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they don't mind getting up, going to work. I mean, but... some people, most people clock in for their job. They, they, they buckle their belts. You right. Know? And that's, that's cool as hell. But, you know, in, in every form of racing, you know, if it's your small town track on Wednesday, Thursday night, if it's a NASCAR race on Saturday or Sunday, if it's a... Uh, go kart race, you know, in Clark County Fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. You know, it don't it don't matter when they when they play that national anthem and when they say that prayer. Get up because I'm I'm the type of person to call you out for it. Oh yeah, you know I will. Yeah, no doubt. And mm -hmm. I don't care how big how big of a bull you are. No, nope. call your ass out. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's being disrespectful to those guys that you're you're paying the, you're there paying to see. <clears throat> Yeah, and yeah. and it don't matter what level of racing we're at, no. you know. Um, you know, all drivers are, are putting that ultimate sacrifice on the line. They all know when they climb in that car or go kart or whatever it is, it could happen. So you know, that's that's the same <clears throat> as you know. I mean, they're not doing it. Well, some some of the drivers are. They're doing it every day. Larson probably races four days a week. You know, yeah, on, a, on a slow week, <laughs> right? But you yeah. know, I mean, that's the same as not appreciating your military, not appreciating your policemen, your firemen, your EMTs, your nurses and doctors, the people that put their life on the line every day. Mm -hmm. You know, hell, now our school teachers. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a, it's not a matter of oh, I don't feel like standing up and taking my hat off. I don't give two shits what your hair looks like. It's a respect. Exactly. Stand yeah. up, take your hat off, be respectful to them guys. That's right. Um, so moving on from that, we've got one last thing to talk about before, and we've talked about this before, so it's a repeat topic that uh, we have to talk about again before we get into our league standings and fantasy stuff. We've got uh, Bowman. It was just announced yesterday that Bowman's going to be out for three to four weeks. Um he ended up hurting his back. I think it was a sprained. Don't quote me on this because I'm not for sure, but I think it was a sprained or a cracked vertebrae. Um, I think it was just sprained. But um, he was racing sprint cars, and I don't remember where, but uh, I've seen the accident. You can look it up on YouTube. It's it's out there. Um, it was a side-to-side -side hit in the sprint cars. The car that he hit took a wild, nasty ride. I mean, it was... Um, 
bars got bent on that one also. Yeah, it's an impressive wreck. It was a very impressive wreck. Bowman flipped a few times. Um, he ended up, he got out of the sprint car and he walked to the ambulance. But uh, he's he was checked out there at the local hospital that he was at. And then he went back to North Carolina and got checked out there. So he's going to be out for three to four weeks. He might be back sooner. We don't know. Josh Berry is going to fill in for him while he's gone. Um, but we get into the topic again of drivers doing, you know, whatever they're going to do on their on their free time. Yeah. And you know, it's cost it's cost Rick. <laughs> and it seems to only happen to Rick Hendrick drivers. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know, Rick Hendrick is a different owner, different type of. I'm going to say, I don't know Rick personally yet. Yeah, not yet. Know, but I get the vibe that he's a pretty um, relaxed team owner. Well, he is now. Right. He now, used to not be. Right now, mm -hmm. he, he is. But, you know, he's got these, he's also trying to, you know, this is the youngest group of guys he's ever had racing for him. Yeah. I mean, they're all four young. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, there's. You look at the. You look at the group that Rick Hendrick has right now. I mean, the average age is probably 24, 23. Something like somewhere that. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Whereas you look at a team owner like Tony Stewart. You know, he's four drivers Kevin Harvick, Eric Almarova. Both older. Both older. That's going to take your average pretty far up. I mean, those two guys alone are probably on their last season. We know I mean, Kevin I, is. I know Harvick is, what, 46, 47? Yeah. Something like that. I don't know how old Amarola is. I believe he's in his 40s. Right. He But he announced his retirement last year and came out of it and said he'd go ahead and do this year. Yeah. But Harvick announced his as well, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, you're looking at, the, you know, the two oldest drivers probably out there on the track driving for one team. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they're not out there snowboarding and skateboarding and skydiving and swimming with sharks and all that shit you know well they're the same age as me so if, if they're like me they're lucky to get out of bed in the morning right <laughs> without an ache and pain <laughs> no kidding you know i'm right there with you uh -huh. but you know then you got ryan priest with Stuart Haas, who's younger and you know i would say Stuart, of course well you got Ryan Priest and Chase Briscoe. That's yeah. your other two. So, I mean, them two are younger. younger yeah. But I can promise you, Stewart's like, yeah, guys, do whatever you want. You know, because he knows that Kevin Harvick and Eric Almarola, <laughs> they're not... <laughs> they don't care. They're not getting too crazy. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. But, but, you know, but then, you you know, you got these you got these four guys at Hendrix, and they're not out getting crazy. They're doing stuff they enjoy doing. They, they, they're doing their hobbies, what they... You know, they're guys their age should be doing. Yeah. But there comes a there comes a time. Imagine if this would have happened to Rick at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Imagine if Chase would have broke his leg snowboarding. And imagine the same week Alex Bowman hurts his back racing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know that, that would be that that that, that could you happen. would probably see Rick come unhinged. Right, but that's the, that's a risk he's taking. Yeah. You know because it can happen. It at the same time mm -hmm. you know it's it's you know you only got one josh berry right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> there's only one berry baby you know right. i mean come on yeah <laughs> but you know imagine taking a hit like and, that and it could time. you know because because larson's still out here running these late models you know and you would think that if something like this is going to happen, it's going to happen to him because he's the one out here doing all this sprint cars, late models, whatever. It could. It very well could. Just and, as... But it's not. It's happening to the other guys, So, which is weird. Yeah. But... I'd say I'd say Rick probably has William Byron in the cage somewhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's probably he's probably locked in a dog kennel yeah. somewhere like he can't even stand up. You know. Well, I would say Byron is probably, he seems like he would be the less active of the four. But you never know. I mean, I don't know what that guy does on his spare time. Um, I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know Chase Elliott was a snowboarder until this happened. Right. But, uh, I didn't know you could snowboard with a mustache like that. That mustache is impressive. It is. I mean, it is. 
just, I know my wife hates it when I when I point out that mustache. I's like, if that man keeps that mustache, he's going to be the series champion. Blaney, Blaney, when he was growing his mustache and he had them all at the same time, that, that I mean, that's unstoppable. Pheno- yeah, that was phenomenal. You know, that's but. Good. Ryan, if you're listening, you need to do that again. Yeah, absolutely. Get Maybe you get that win back, buddy. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna win all kinds of races. You get that mustache. But I mean, Chase <laughs> Elliott be snowboarding with a mustache like that. I mean, you know, I mean, he was going down that hill, and there's so many people saying, "Who's that porn star coming down the hill? Who's that porn star? It's probably what caused him wreck." You know, right? <laughs> Is he a cop or a porn star? You know. <laughs> and I, I, I think. <laughs> Anytime Chase Elliott has a mustache on, he's just, he's got to be one of the favorites to win. Well, I mean, it's you like, put Hooters on that car. I mean, it's like Jerry Lawler dropping the strap. It, you know, when Chase over. grows the mustache out, what's It's out? over. Exactly. I mean, he needs to have that mustache on at least till he gets that win to get him into the playoffs. Right. And, uh, you know, I get the eye roll every time I, every time I say that, but so he just looks silly with that. He just looks stupid. No, no, he don't look stupid at all. Looks like that an American. Right there, looks like an American badass. Is exactly, what he like. that's what he looks like, and that's what he is. You know, he's standing there outside the car. It was like last year, I think it was Atlanta. He had Hooters as a sponsor on the car. He had yeah. the he had the mustache kick and he had the shades on. I was like, that man right there is going to win the race. He's it, just look at him. Right. He has to. Yeah, no doubt. All the other guys should just not even get in the car. Yep. Yeah. Why race it at that point? But anyway, back to the Bowman thing. Um, which brings me to the question, because I side with the drivers on this. Yeah, you know, me too. I am big on they need to do what they want to do. They need to have fun. They need to live their life. But at the same time, I understand from Rick's point of view, how can he lure sponsors, big major sponsors, for these guys if they are capable of not being in that car for a good stretch of time, you know? How can you promise a sponsor that this guy is going to be in the car for all, what do we have, 36 races? Yep. For all 36 of those, <clears throat> when he's out there doing whatever he wants to do, you know, you can't really promise that, but that's part of landing that sponsor. And uh, that, that kind of puts Hendrick, kind of puts Rick into a predicament yeah um i think i don't think the owner should should limit what they do he shouldn't stop them from having fun or living their life or racing in these other series is because that's how they got there that's how they got there that's what and develop a love and to someone like bowman or larson these sprint cars that's fun that's just fun it doesn't matter if they win that race it doesn't matter if they finish last you know, that cup drive, that cup ride, that's their job. That's what pays their bills and keeps food on the table. Yes, that is, <clears throat> that's where they're clocking in. Yep. You know, they're putting in the time, they're putting in they the work, and they're getting up. paid. Yeah. But the other stuff is where they're having fun. They're letting loose, they're having fun, it doesn't matter. So, what I think should happen <clears throat> Because I don't, I don't want to see Chase Elliott out for six weeks. I don't want to see Alex Bowman out for three to four weeks. But I understand they're doing what they're doing. But should we just give them a waiver? And that's kind of what I'm getting at is my point. Well, my, my whole point to this thing is, um, you know, I've heard people talk about this. Because this has only happened yesterday. It came out yesterday. But I've already heard people talking about... Um, the backlash this is going to cause the with back, Hendrick. Yes, yeah. because this is already the second time Larson's out here doing everything that he does. We're literally a third of the way into the season. Yeah, and, and his he's, second driver, he's yeah, had to go sec- out. yeah, and it's 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 got to be costing Rick money. You know, he's pissed off about it. He right. has to be. Um, but <clears throat> you know, people want NASCAR to step in, and I don't think NASCAR should step in. But I think we should not hand out waivers for everything i don't think Here, chase should have got a waiver here's what i think and this this is me being honest i think if the driver goes out the car gets parked i think that's how it should be well 
now i can see that you know because now you're now you're forcing the team owners to look at it from a different perspective i'm not i I side with the drivers 100 Mm percent don't you know don't stop me from living my life but you also can't become a NASCAR driver at 40 years old. Right. You know what I'm saying? It don't happen. Yeah. It can't happen. Now, well, well I mean, you know, Tony shows up and talks to me and you. It's different, you know. Right. But, you know, it's one of them things of these drivers, they have to be able to live their life or they're not going to be happy drivers. Mm-hmm. So, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. But now... You're going to force me, if I'm a driver and I'm driving for Roger Penske, and he says, yeah, you're free to do whatever you want, but remember, if you get hurt, that car's in the garage. Now I'm thinking about it like, now you're forcing me to grow up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now you're, now I might be on the... I might be on the kid slopes on my snowboard. I ain't gonna be I ain't gonna with be the out, porn stash. Right, I ain't gonna be out there doing the the X Games and shit. You know? Right, but you know, I'll, I'll still I'll find that happy medium. Now you're forcing the driver to find that happy medium. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I don't want to let my boss down. Yeah. Because it's it's gonna affect my career. And and yes, I'm I'm along those same lines of forcing the driver to think about it. Yes, think extra hard before you go out and do something silly. But <clears throat> looking at it from the owner's standpoint, I've put all this money in this car. I've got sponsors that are depending on that car being on the track. And now all of a sudden this driver can't do it. Well, that in order to pay the bills, that car has to be on the track. Right. It may have to have somebody else in it. How many people bought tickets to that race each us Elliott? Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, now and, you're affecting the other end of it. Yes, so. you are affecting the other end. Of it. Well, from Rick Hendrick's standpoint, that car is still making money. Mm-hmm. Right? Even if Josh Berry's in it, it's still making money. It's making money, money on TV. Yes. Right. Um, you know, NASCAR would be hurting if Chase Elliott isn't in that car because of ticket sales. Right. Right. So <clears throat> what I think the happy medium needs to be is... NASCAR should just not give out a waiver to guys that are out snowboarding or racing late models or racing sprint cars or trip down the steps and right. fall. Just don't give them a waiver. You know, give. I think you should only be given a waiver for two reasons. One is if you're hurting that cup car like Bowman was last year or Kurt Busch. Right. If they're hurting the cup car, they get a waiver automatic. Number two, you have something like a death in a family. Or childbirth childbirth death in the family you know your parent or grandparent may be on their deathbed with x amount of time to to live you know those drivers should still be there for those family moments because i mean you think about it these guys are out there on the weekends they're working the weekends 36 weekends a year they don't get no time off on it and really their weekend probably starts on thursday it goes from it goes from mid-february to the end of november yeah Without you know, a, with what they got maybe one or two all, weeks All Star Weekend. Well, they're still not off on All Star Weekend. Some, Some of, of them, them are. Some of them. Right, but uh, they used to get Mother's Day off and Easter off. Yeah. And they're racing those days now. Well, yeah, we're racing Bristol Dirt on Easter now. Yep. So, but I think those are the only two reasons you should be given a waiver. You know, you you break your leg snowboarding, you don't get a waiver. Right. But guess what? You got to win to get in. Yep. You're behind the eight ball, and now you're in the doghouse with your team owner. That's your problem. Yep. You know, go have your fun. But at your risk. At your risk, and you need to know the consequences of something bad happening, you know. And well, you look at, you know, um, <clears throat> we were at Brownstown Wednesday night mm-hmm. to watch races, and the guy that won the uh, late model 50 lap feature over there. Thornton? Ricky Thornton Jr. Yeah. You know, when he got to, he got to victory lane over there, and... You know, the announcers go up and talk to him and everything. And, you know, this is a guy that's doing late model circuit, small town, Wednesday night, Thursday nights, you know, stuff like that. I mean, this guy, he's not even made it to the big time. Not even close to the big time yet. But right. he's, he's out there doing the late model dirt tracks, having a blast, loving. I'm sure he's loving everything he's doing. Yeah. Talented driver. But mm-hmm. when they asked him about his win, he said, you know, 
my I'm dedicating this race to my grandma. She passed away this morning. Yeah. And you know, just just think about that because these NASCAR drivers have the the fame and the fortune to where they could probably be there at their grandma's thing and, and this guy probably could have too. But this is when we say that these racers aren't made, they're born, you know, it's ingrained in him. He had a job to do. He had a team. He had that team dependent on him being out there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he pulled it out and won it. Led the whole thing. Yeah. You I know. Mean, he made it look easy. Right. At Brown's but, time. you know, for for a young man to say, my grandma passed this morning. And he wasn't there. I mean, that that's something he made that choice. And I'm sure it was the right choice at the, at that time. Yeah. But when he's our age, he'll probably regret it. Yeah. Not, not going mm-hmm. to work that day, you know? Right. I agree with that. So, I mean, <laughs> these, these guys, these NASCAR cup drivers, talented group of awesome young men. Yeah. But, uh, they need to, don't take for granted what you have. Yes, these definitely and I'm talking to the NASCAR Cup drivers. You yeah. know, I don't know if any of them listen or not. I'm but sure they all do. Well, I wouldn't buy. I know, I know a good handful of them are. Right, you know, right. But you can't take it for granted, and you're only young once. You know, so you got to live your life. I'm right there with you guys on that. But think, think about, think about the big picture. The big picture. Yeah. Yeah, because when you get old, that big picture gets smaller. Yep. And and things that really matter get bigger, you know. Um, <clears throat> so I must matter a lot because I've gained like sixty pounds in the last two years. <laughs> <laughs> I gained quite a bit over the winter time, but I'm in the process of losing that now. <laughs> I but, matter a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but that's really all I've got to talk about. What are you looking forward to? Well, hold on. Before we're done with that, what do you think about the waiver thing? I've told you my thoughts I, on I the think waiver. It, I think it's a great, a great idea. A great Just point. quit handing them out. Right. Yeah. You know. Now there's, there's two reasons, and it's in writing. But I'm glad you brought that back up and pulled us back in because what I was going to say was, and we've said it before that these these NASCAR drivers, to me, in my eyes. Hands down, best athletes on the planet. Yeah. Period. Because mm-hmm. I know I know people, you know, people don't know a lot about NASCAR. They're thinking, oh, you're just sitting in a car driving, you know. Yeah. Bullshit. Your life is on the line. Right. Now, I, I, I side with the drivers on the side of, I'm hurt, I can't drive, being 100% honest. Because I guarantee you that Chase couldn't have gotten that car, and I guarantee you Alex Bowman can't get in that car because... You look at drivers like Chase Briscoe, who's raced the last three races with a broken finger, had surgery on a Monday, still got in the car mm-hmm. and raced. And you, with his in-car camera, you can see him driving <laughs> with nine fingers on the wheel. And they got that they get that broken finger that one was operated on, taped up and sticking straight up off the wheel where he can't even, you know. On on a Talladega track. That's tough to where do. Where you need that extra finger on that wheel. <laughs> you need another white knuckle. <laughs> right. So, I mean, these guys, these aren't your NBA and NFL players out there. Yeah. These are tough-ass men, mm-hmm. you know, and they will find a reason to get in the car, not a reason to get out of it. Yeah. And so, and I think the owners know that, too. Yeah. That if they can be in that car, they will be in that car. Yeah. Because it's a different breed. It's a different breed of sport, you know? It's, right. It's not a, not this pussy ass football and basketball and stuff like that. Yeah. Where they stub their toe when they're out for three weeks. Right. No, we don't have none of that. Right. Um, I know we're on time crunch here. But there's one thing that I was going to talk about that we didn't get to. We'll talk about that next week. We'll talk about the Bubba Tantrum. Yeah, After he got yeah. out of the car, we'll we'll talk about that next week. But uh, got the monster mile coming. We got up. the monster mile coming up. What are your thoughts on Dover? Uh, I like Dover. I like it's the only concrete track 
on the circuit. Uh, it, it's a, it's not a huge difference, but it really is to the way these cars handle. Yeah. You know, it don't heat up and cool off like asphalt does. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a reason Jimmy Johnson won every year on concrete because <laughs> yeah. he knew how to handle it, you know, and others mm-hmm. didn't. But it's a, it's the monster ball. I mean, it's always a entertaining race. They call it Bristol on steroids, and I believe that. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be. An, I think it's going to be a pretty good race. I think. Um, I think it goes through Hendrick. You know, because what was it a couple years ago? The Hendrick cars finished one, one, two, three, four. Right. Um, it seems to always be a Hendrick track. Um, I'm I'm expecting Hendrick to be up front. I'm hoping that Hendrick is not up front when the checker flag waves. We're getting ready to get into the fantasy stuff, and we're going to talk about that. But I do believe Hendrick is going to be up front quite a bit of that race. And He'll qualify this, up front, too. This could be Chase Elliott's ticket to the playoffs right here. Yeah. And I hate to say that because I know some people in the standings in the fantasy stuff have picked Chase Elliott, but, um, but this could be a shot. You know, I mean, go ahead and punch that ticket and get it out of the way, because, I mean, he won here last year, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and he does he does pretty good there, and I think I think all the Hendrick cars will do good. I mean, they know how to set them cars up for that track. Oh that, yeah. That, that garage team, they yeah. they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I I took a Hendrick driver. So I was gonna say, let's bit, go ahead and let's go ahead and get into this fantasy. It bit stuff. me in the ass a little bit, but I'm, you know what? I'm gonna <laughs> roll with it cause, And you picked. Well, I'll go back a little further. Okay. You know, being's I being's the league picks get turned into me, and yeah. we've probably talked about this before. I turned my pick in to three people in the group mm-hmm. on Tuesday night, whereas the rest of the field is turning theirs in on Thursday night. I do that for transparency and trust reasons. Right. Because the picks <clears throat> come to me. I don't want anybody thinking. That you've sorted through everybody else's right. pick. Right, now I can work the numbers and stuff like that. So I turned my pick on Tuesday night, Yeah. and um, Tuesday night I chose Alex Bowman. Yeah. And mm-hmm. <laughs> Wednesday uh, <laughs> it comes out that, you know, he'd been in a sprint car accident, and, and uh, he's not going to make the race. And when I found out about it, you know, I thought, well, hell, you know, that just screwed me, but... You know, me and Chad talk and everything like that. I stick, I stick to my rules. You know, I'm not going to change my driver because that happened because I wouldn't let anybody else do it. So that's why we turn in car numbers and not names. Right. I turned in the number 48 car, and that's the car I got. And Josh Berry is going to be driving that 48 car this weekend, so that's that's just the way it goes. Um, but I'm not disappointed by that. I've got complete faith. And, Josh Berry does pretty good there. Yeah, I've got complete faith in Josh, <laughs> and I've got complete faith in that Hendrick team around Josh. You know, he was, you know, I said it before the race before Chase came back. I was really impressed with how good Josh filled in for Chase when he yeah. was out. Mm-hmm. So I ain't worried about it. I think Josh is going to handle it just fine. Yeah, I think he'll do pretty good. Um, I know it's not Bowman for you, but... Uh, Right. I went, I knew, I had a feeling that a lot of people would be taking Hendrick cars. So I said, you know what, I have to, I got to get, I got to break out of this train of, of, of racers. And I got to make a move, somehow. How do I make a move without picking a Hendrick car? So I went with the old man. I went with the closer. I'm going Kevin Harvick. You gotta love that pick for the win. Yeah, he's um, a top. He's a top five driver there usually every year. He does pretty good at Dover. So I'm going with Harvick, just so I can break out of this tie with Brian. Uh, got little D one point behind us. Me and Brian. Riggs one point in front of you. Riggs one point in front of me. I'm I'm only fourteen points away from HR. Yep. Right. And I know that's going to piss him off. If I pass HR, watch out, boys. You see the you see the numbers with me and HR there, don't you? 
What happened there? Well, I'm looking all around HR. He's in 10th spot with 126 points. He fell five spots this week. Yeah, and what happened to the Wooster Warrior? The Wooster Warrior, I'm, I'm going to go back to your bold <laughs> prediction of last week. You said, <clears throat> I'm going to get five spots. And I'm looking at you right there. You went up five spots. So, good job. Yeah, totally. Good job. I predicted um, to go from 12th to 7th last week. Now, as you can see, my board, we're looking at the board that it, it you know, it changes every week. And I, I'm the one that I manually change the board. But uh, something happened. And I was I was going from last week to this week. And I, I erased it before I, I wrote down everything. So I didn't get everybody as yeah. far as how many spots they've moved. I've got their points, and it's updated on ridingthewall.com. But really, the, the the biggest change was from 5th to 15th. That's, yeah. That's where most of the people changed. <clears throat> yeah. Um, i got to give a shout-out to Shannon. He was yeah. the only one that picked Kyle Busch last week. Yeah, he did. Picking a winner at Talladega is tough to do. Yeah. And he did it. He was the only one that did it. So. Uh, Good job, buddy. Good job, Shannon. I'm sorry I don't know how many spots that changed you. But um, sitting in 19th spot with 153 points, three points away from Jess. She is, she needs a parachute. She, <laughs> <laughs> she needs a parachute. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing, but I am. Because <laughs> she was in like fifth, fifth place just a few weeks ago, and now I'm she is mama catcher. 18th. And you've got Lou. I mean, we've got three three ladies in this uh, fantasy standings. We got Lou, we've got Jess, and we've got Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> and and Jess is in eighteenth. Jeremy's in twentieth, and Lou's in twenty first. So <laughs> I told everybody a few weeks ago, don't don't uh, don't count Lou out because she's she's coming. I well, think she just has... like earlier when he's talking about Earnhardt at Talladega. You know, how that's, he worked his way up a couple That's spots. what she's doing right yep. here. And uh, Mama's I, very calculating. I think she is, uh, she's on the move. Because I think at one point she was, what, 25th or 26th? 26th. She was point. dead last. And now she's not dead last anymore. She's five spots out of the basement. Well, I mean, she's, she's only a few spots away from She's 50 me. points ahead of dead last now. So, I mean, she's working her way up. Yeah. She's only two two points away from Jeremy, so... She'll pass him before breakfast. Yeah. And because Jeremy turns his pick into the group. <laughs> right. Everybody knows who he picked. He picked uh, Chase Elliott this week. Um, and this is... The picks are locked at this point. Yeah. So we can talk about them. Um, Earl, Earl went down two spots, or Sonya went down two spots, either whichever way you look at it. He's eighth, tied with Mo Fat. Yep. Mo Fat's just quietly moving up the board. I've noticed that. Uh, He's kind of. It's about time for him to retract down a little bit because he, he'll do that. He'll go up and then he'll go down. And he's like a wave on the ocean. You know, he'll. Just depends where that wave's at at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. Well, I he, do know. He, but yeah, he's on a he's on an uprise right now. He's he's moving up steadily, moving up. Um, uh, but Joe T closed the gap on Hunter a little bit this week. That's what I liked. Yeah, that that put a smile on my face to see Almirola finish whatever he finished twenty something. I, I think Hunter had like fifty seven points last week. Yeah, he's he got seventy three now. He took a hard hit. He took a good hit. He's still in the lead. Yep. But uh, Joe T's only fourteen points away from him, so that's one good race. And I don't know who Hunter picked yet. Uh, hopefully, they pick two different drivers. Hunter took Chase Elliott. Ah oh, shit. Who'd Joe take? Chase Elliott. Oh, well, we're not... What about Josh? Josh is 17 points out. Don't tell me Chase Elliott. Everybody's going to pick Chase Elliott anyway. Uh, let me see. I'm going to call Kevin Harvick and tell him to wreck no, Chase Elliott. Oh, no, bro took uh, Truex. Okay, so at least we got somebody different yeah, there. We've so got a chance. We got bro, a chance. Bro could sneak up on him here. Um, <clears throat> who else are we looking at here? I don't know. We've got... But I'll tell you, you know, most of the picks, and they'll get sorted tonight and everything like that, but most of the picks were Chase Elliott and Harvick. Really? Yep. Is there a lot more Harvicks? There's a handful of them. Gosh, damn it. I was hoping everybody pick a Hendrick driver. Well, there was, there was a couple Byrons. 
What happened to Tony? Uh, I don't remember who he picked last week. He picked he took, oh, uh, he, he took McDowell. McDowell. Yeah, he was a, two laps in. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Back right car. You know, it, he was in New Jersey when I texted him. I didn't know. I was like, God dang, dude! It didn't take you but two laps to fuck that up, did it? And he said, I can't watch it right now. What happened? He said, I'm in New Jersey with work. I'm like, like, oh, you don't want to know. I was like McDowell just ate it on lap two. <laughs> well. Poor Tony. Yeah. Couldn't have happened to a better UK fan. You no, know? I couldn't. But uh, I don't have a doubt that he's going to he's gonna start heading back towards the top. No. I'm not. only 10 points away from Tony. He won't this week. Uh-oh. What do you know? No, I just... I know did he, Tony. Did he pick Chase Elliott again? Uh, let me give you... Let's see. I gotta, I'm hoping that me and Brian pick two different people. No. Uh, Tony took Truex. Okay. Okay. I hope Truex and Elliot crash on lap one into each other. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> I would enjoy that. I know I know. Jess took Elliot. Oh, yes. Yeah, so did, she did. No she, offense, Mama. Yeah, she, uh, she had a hard time picking this week. And uh, I would not tell her. Anything. I must ask her a question when we're done <laughs> with this podcast. She, she secretly has to like the porn stash, right? Oh, yeah. Has to. Either that or it's the Hooters on the car. So, either either or, you know. You gotta be a fan of both. I understand. I understand. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we got Tony dropped eight spots. And a lot of those plus and minuses there I did off of memory. So, yeah. the top three spots stayed the same um well you know i mean the the race we just got done with everybody any nascar fan knows it's a roulette wheel you know it really is so i mean and i think going back to what you said last week on the uh talladega race drawing names out of a hat we might look into that for next year because i think that would be fun the only question is does that burn for a second pick like like if i picked i don't know let's say i picked chase Elliott. Chase Elliott at Martinsville, yep. and then I come back and I'm drawn out of a hat, and I, I get Chase Elliott again. Does that burn him for me? I I, I don't know. We'll and, have to work through yeah, that. Yeah, we'll work through that, but I don't think it should count against you. I, I think, think it, it should, should be, be a fun side game. It, it should be. Yeah. And now, but I could also, if you don't show up where we have the pick, or you send somebody to pick for you, you know, you know like if I got to work, you yeah. know, I'll I'll send the group a message saying, hey, Lisa's going to get him. Pull a name for me. If you don't show up to make a pick, then the pick that's drawn for you, you burn. So we get complete buy-in from the from the group. You know what I'm okay. saying? That's what yeah. we want. And we'll meet somewhere fun like, like Hooters. Yeah. I mean, we could do that. I mean, you could do it on computer, too, because there's some people that might not be able to make it. No, screw that. You know? No, you're going to show up or you're getting burned. Well, no. I mean, <laughs> I'm. where does Jerry live? I don't know. I think Jerry lives in California. I thought he was. I, think, I thought he worked now, with Earl and them. No, he's Earl's buddy. Oh, he don't work with us. Because see, me, be Earl, and Brian ticket. all work at the same at the same place. Okay. Well, I thought. But well, I think Jerry, because Earl originally is from California, well, like you, Redding or something like that, Northern California. Yeah. I, I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong, Earl, but uh, I think that's where, and I think Jerry is still out there in California. So he might not be able to make it for a... Well, I mean... Well, Jerry, you're just, if you're it, just going to you make a road trip, buddy. If it was me, I'd be buying a plane <laughs> ticket. You know what I'm saying? Because right. I, know, I know it's a $50 league, but there's some things in life you take serious, and this you is one to. of them. That's true. You know, kids, work, wife, and the NASCAR, NASCAR league. fantasy league. You know? Yes. That's, you got to have your priorities real. straight. So, but that's... Uh, that's really all I have to talk about the standings. Hunter's still on top. For for now, he's the gap is closed. I'm gonna say in three weeks he won't be. You think so? Three weeks. Three weeks. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah. Bold prediction number two. What is today? I was right on number one. What is today? The twenty seventh. Yep. I'll finish writing that in just a minute. <laughs> yep. So, mark my words. Uh, write it down. Yeah, it's gonna be wrote down. Three weeks. Three weeks. Hunter will not be in the lead, and. 
we're getting to the point in this NASCAR thing. I'm sure Hunter's a great guy, and you've you've told oh, me many times he's a hell of a guy, hell of and a I, guy. I don't have Besides any doubts about though, that. Man. Well, that that puts him a little <laughs> bit better in my standing, but uh, I'm just getting tired of seeing Hunter at the top, and <laughs> this is all last season, the yeah. whole season it seemed like, yeah, and here he is again. But so I would I would love to see nothing more than Hunter go to second or third place. Just even if it was just for a little bit, you know, I would like that. That'd put a smile it on my make, face. Make us feel like he's human. You yeah, know what I'm saying right because it ain't right now bad, he's, just... he has a sports almanac at this yeah. point, and and I've always did my uh, league picks trying to beat HR Scotty, mm-hmm. and that was the only thing. If I if if I finish 22nd, I'm fine with that as long as HR finished 23rd or below me. Right, I I, I won. But now it's gotten to the point, yeah, I won that battle. and uh, Now it's about the war, not just the battle. Yes, now I'm to the point where I'm cheering for H.R. Scotty or somebody. It could be you, like right now you're in a better position to do it. But I'm, I'm, I'm to the point where I'm pulling for Scotty to well, pull ahead of uh, Hunter. I mean, Scotty puts it, he puts in a lot of, a lot of time researching these picks and, and you know, he he's he's making very educated decisions. Oh yeah. So I mean, he told don't, me don't count him out. No, he already told me this week that he's already got like seven or eight Next people. Seven or eight races. Yeah, where he's he's got this driver penciled in at, and this driver penciled in at. He does his homework. Yes, but he told me, and I want to say this before we go. I told him that I would tell you this on the air, and he's like. Go ahead. It's your podcast. You can say whatever you want to talk about. You know, so Damn right we can. I, exactly. That's what I said. Don't need permission. I said, uh, <clears throat> we were talking about Larson, you know, when we went over to Brownstown. We have another message for HR as far as that goes. But uh, he said, yeah, it looks like Justin is part of his pit crew. I said, yeah, he might be a Chevy guy now, you know, uh-huh, talking about you. Thing, yeah. Yeah. And he said... And this is text. You can see it right here. He says, I see that happening maybe next year when Harvick is done about you becoming a Chevy guy. Right. He's texted me the same thing. Okay. I told him, I said, I'm going to tell him that on the podcast so I can he get knows, your reaction. He, know, he for knows it. better than that. And, and when he said, he said, well, you're probably, because the, the story goes back a little bit. See, when Chad and I went over to Brownstown this past Wednesday night, mm-hmm. you know, we, uh, Larson met us. Yeah, Larson met us. Talked to us for a little so bit. So we, we went in the pits, seen where Larson was at, and we was just walking by, and he's and Larson was like, hey, aren't you Chad and Justin from Riding the Wall Podcast? He's like, hell yeah, we are. What's yeah. up, man? Right. And Who are you? Right. And he's like, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Kyle. You know, I've, I've been driving for a, little, for a minute, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Well, we, you know, so we talked to Kyle for a little bit, had him sign my shirt. Yeah. And uh, Kyle, Kyle, man, I mean, he's he's such a talent. You know, for being a young man, he's such a talent. But he is such a he's a, he's a little bitty feller. Well, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say this. He's about my size. <laughs> he's smaller. Than I'm you. not a big guy. He's smaller than you. <laughs> I know he was on the ramp of his trailer when he was signing your shirt. I'm standing I, on the ground. Right, and I got a picture of it right. while he's signing your shirt, and you cannot see him. Right, and At he's all. standing on his tiptoes. <laughs> he was on the ramp, <laughs> yeah. and, and he's he, just signing this on my shoulder blade. Now I'm not, I'm not a the giant. Lower, the lower part of your shoulder. Right, <laughs> I'm not a giant, but I'm. I'm and not he was a small halfway guy. up the ramp. He's not at the bottom. He's right. at the halfway. <laughs> and I'm on the ground, and he's standing on his tiptoes, sign, <laughs> signing the bottom of my shoulder blade. And you can't see. You can't no, see the guy. All. The only way you would know Kyle Larson is signing my shirt. Is if you look down at the ground and see him standing on his tiptoes really? behind me. I'll try to get that picture on the website if I can. <laughs> but, but you know, I mean, Kyle took the time to sign it, talk to me for a minute. You know, um, always appreciated. Um, he's only the second driver to ever do that. Um, yeah. And Tony Stewart was the first, obviously. You know, he. And they're both friends of the show. Oh yeah, so. yeah. I mean, and and look, you know, who we talk about all the time. The two people you can put in anything with wills and they can drive the shit out of it Mm -hmm. you know i mean that's the that's the level we hold people to if they're going to be friends of the show right you can't just be a a a good race car driver you've got to be able to 
jump in and go anytime. You can't be a Cody Anything. Ware. No, you can't no, be a Cody absolutely Ware. not. No. Absolutely not. <clears throat> and uh, you know, it it takes a certain uh, pedigree, I guess yeah. you'd say. You know, mm-hmm. so we hold a high standard, right? So Scott Scotty texts me and says, "Well, oh, well, Kyle Larson's on your shirt." And he told me too. He said, "If you get a chance to talk to him, tell him, tell him I picked him next week at Talladega, and he better do good." Mm-hmm. So when I, you know, Kyle signs my shirt, I turn around and talk to him for a minute. I told him, I said, my "Older brother, he's a uh, he's in a fantasy NASCAR league with us, and <coughs> he uh, he wanted me to let you know that he picked you this week." coming up at Talladega yeah. and he said you know do him good and what now Scott him. now let's paint the picture here when Scott says you better do me good he's not asking nicely he's saying this with some he's saying this with some stern it's, message right Scott right? Scott's a Scott's a very he knows what he wants yeah he's very but he's he's also very he, he he's respectful and polite so he can be, yes. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, for the he, most part. No, yeah, but he always gets his point across. Oh yeah. Now, that's him saying to somebody he's never met before. You better fucking win. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. That's that's him. You With know the glaring saying? eyes. Right. That says. <laughs> if not, you'll be pulling weeds. You know right. what I mean? It's a. Uh, but and and so I tell Kyle Larson, I say, look, my brother picked you in our fantasy NASCAR league to uh, to win at Talladega. I said he wanted me to tell you to do him good. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was Kyle's response to that? Well, if I heard it right, <clears throat> now there were engines all around. Right, you know, there were people pulling in and out of these pits. H.R. Scotty's a prick. Yeah, I think he pretty much said, "Yeah, tell Scotty I'll do whatever the fuck I want to do. Right. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm sure the day comes when Kyle Kyle joins the show, we can maybe line up a little meet and greet with yeah. Scotty and Kyle. Right, they can handle have that. Have a who's the man right here, you know. Yeah. So. And, and a who's the man... That's going to be a story for another day. But off season. We're going to, we're, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's an off season story. We got quite a few stories about that. That's uh, something we did back in the day. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it was a, uh, it it was cool meeting him. Yeah. And him meeting us. Yeah. And, it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I think he gained a lot of knowledge. Um, he definitely did. Right. Um, hey, I know he finished what sixth in the late model that night, and he finished fifth in the modified. Yeah, so I'll tell you even what. Even Kyle was... Larson cannot just go to Brownstown and win. Brownstown's right. a tough place to win. Yeah, no walls. No, it's all balls, no walls. Gas and go. Yeah, all balls, no walls. That's right. So, if you can win at Brownstown, you can win anywhere. Even Kyle Larson can't just come there and win. So. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, no, uh, Johnny Davenport was there. You know, yep. and, and he didn't do he very didn't good. Win. He didn't win. You no. know, I mean, heat number two of the late models. I think he got lapped, didn't he, in the feature? He may, yeah, he may. No, I don't, he may have actually. He was well. I don't. I don't remember. I don't know if anybody got lapped. <laughs> I don't know if anybody well, got passed. <laughs> that's true. There <laughs> wasn't a whole lot of passing going on. But um, you know, heat number two of the late models. Um, row one was Kyle Larson. Inside. Row one on the outside was Johnny Davenport, and that was like the feature to us, you know, seeing Kyle Larson and Johnny Davenport in late models on the dirt, yeah, in Brownstown. Mm, that was pretty cool on a ten lap shootout. And Larson ran away from him in yeah, that he race. He I ran think away Larson, from I think Davenport fell back to like third, fourth, third, third or fourth. fourth in the heat, and Larson kind of ran away with it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but um, he didn't do so hot in the feature. Um, he looked like he was the man to beat after the heat races. Yeah. Feature was a whole nother story. Well, it was 40 cars, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of traffic out there on a dirt race. Yeah, and you've got the best in the world yep. driving a late model, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but that's our that's our league standings. we still got Hunter at the top. Jess is needing a pair of 
parachute because she's going to the bottom. But she picked Elliot this week, so she might have something there. You know, her and Hunter picked the same person, so we'll see what happens. Um, so we got Dover this week. Next week, we will talk about the happenings at Dover. We're going to touch back up with this Bubba's tantrum after Talladega. Um, and then whatever else transpires during the week. Yeah, <clears throat> we'll see if any... Anything happens, I'm sure there'll be more come out about Bowman and yeah. his injuries, and if it's caused any soon-to-be restrictions on drivers or anything like that, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, because I mean uh, he's really putting himself in a bad spot now with this because <clears throat> you know he's missing three to four weeks. He already needs you know with the points thing that happened, the second penalty that they've gotten, they lost some points. He's in a must-win, yeah. so he's going to be a whole month. Of, well, I mean. It, you know, granted, it happened on the track last year. He missed a lot of the season last year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now now he's kind of that guy that's not always there, not very dependable, which, you know, I mean, not, not I'm not throwing any blows towards Alex Bowman because what happened last year yeah. it happened on the track. Right. And what happened Tuesday happened on a different track, different series. Yeah. You know, so, I mean... I don't think he's out there. I think he's out there mastering his skill, you know, enjoy, and doing what he enjoys. But there's going to be something, if this stuff keeps happening, there's going to be something that these owners have to do. Yeah, there's, it's going to have You're to. You're going to tie their hands. Well, it seems to be only one owner right now. Right. <laughs> and, you know, he used to be very strict with it until he signed Larson. Mm -hmm. Larson, that was basically one of the stipulations and that may to be, Larson that, coming to Hendrick. That, well, I mean, but that may have been... Something Jeff, when he became part owner, talked to Rick about was like, "Hey, when you tied mine and Jimmy's hands, we wasn't happy. Right? We were looking for somewhere else to go. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that generated some of this. You know? That's true. You never know what conversations are but going I mean, on behind closed Jeff, doors. Jeff wasn't out there. I mean, granted, he had a mustache. <laughs> you know, it he wasn't as, Chase Elliott. It wasn't have. as good as Chase as you know, but he had he kind of had a different style of a mustache right. in the early nineties. Right. Um, but uh, that's about all I've got for for this episode. Um, there are a few updates to the website that I want to tell people about if they're going to visit ridingwall dot com. We have got to give another shout out to Eric. He's just putting in work man Killing just it. putting in work he's got a comment section up there now you can make a comment stop in tell us what you like what you don't like ideas for the show let us know what you want to talk about or what you want to hear us talk about and we'll be happy to put that out there um we've also got um on the standings you can if you're in the league you can go back and look at previous picks that you've made so that way you can kind of strategize and know who you've who you've picked in the past and uh, might that might help you with your picks for this week or, or coming up you know as the season progresses and another thing that he's also done um, which he was just showing me this last night he has made an application for the league for like next year Yes, so if you are wherever you're at, you know, we're in Indiana, right? So if you're in California and you're listening to us or you're in Canada or you're that Belgian badass that's right. listening to us that wants to get in our league, you can do that. You know, there's an application. Just fill it out. Put your information down there. We'll get a hold of you. You know, let you know the rules. The, the Singapore the, psycho. That's right. You know, I mean, he, he can... Yeah. We're breaking into I mean, Canada now. Come on, we're now. breaking into Canada now. So I don't know if you know that, but we are. Yeah. So you no, know, I mean, we're we're not just nationwide. Right. Worldwide. We are worldwide. boats and hoes, baby. Exactly. Boats and hoes. Um, Race cars and hoes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's, he has done all of that and added all that stuff to the website. So very proud of Eric for doing that. He's really helping us out. Thank you, little buddy. Um, yes, you're doing good, bud. Keep it up. And. Uh, I think he might get in this thing next week or next year. You yeah. never know. Yeah. You never know. I mean, he is, and he's gotten to the point now where he's updating these points as soon as the race is over. As soon yeah. as the, as soon as the results are official, yeah. bam, standings are updated. Just check the bam. website. So, 
he's doing good i just wanted to throw all that stuff out there while we were on the air um i think that's all i've got you got anything i don't i don't uh um, well, you gonna be back out turkey hunting more this week well i gotta work friday and well tomorrow's friday i gotta work tomorrow on monday and then i'm done yeah yeah well if you get one, i'm send retiring me a picture so tuesday tuesday on i can do whatever i want there you go you know, I'm living the life. Absolutely, for the for like two weeks probably I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy them two weeks. <laughs> oh, you know me. I know. <laughs> you give me nothing to do and unlimited cases of beer, I can conquer the world. Yep, <laughs> I know it. I know it. <laughs> so that's all we got for this week. Um, be sure to join us next week. Like I said, we're going to talk about Dover, look ahead to Kansas, and talk about these. Better get to clicking them hills, Dorothy. Kansas right. ain't no joke. Kansas is right around the corner. So, thank you guys for listening this week, and we will talk to you next week. Right in the face.